Summer movie season is over. We are heading into the fall. And with that said, it's time to dive into my top 10 favorite films of this summer. This video is more of a recap of the summer. How did it go? What are films that maybe you missed that you should definitely be checking out, whether it's on video on demand now or whether it will hit streaming very soon? We're heading into the fall season. Look forward to my most anticipated films for the fall season. But I'm very excited to be doing the summer video. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button. And without further ado, let's get into this. with any top 10 list we're probably going to have some honorable mentions so let's lay those out right here at my number 12 would have been bad boys ride or die my number 11 though is twisters which i had never seen the original one up until like a week prior where my wife's like you cannot go see the new one until you see the original and i absolutely adored it and i think the new one especially on a rewatch kind of loses some of the charm of the original but I think Glenn Powell, Daisy Edgar Jones, and Anthony Ramos make this movie worth checking out. In a sense, I think, and I still stand by this, that it is the perfect summer blockbuster. I mean, it's a perfect movie. No, but when you go to the blockbusters, what do you want to experience? Thrills, laughs, excitement, Twisters has all of that. That's where we jump into my number 10, and that is Inside Out 2, which is an almost perfect movie. And almost just as good as the original. I say this as someone who absolutely loves the original Inside Out. It is one of my favorite Pixar films of all time, and it's right up there with the likes of Toy Story, which is my favorite franchise of all time. And for me, I didn't know if they were going to be able to rekindle that same magic. Pixar has kind of been on a streak where a lot of people haven't been loving their movies. And it's kind of nice to see Inside Out 2 come first off and become the most successful animated film of all time. That is exciting to me. But also, it's a winning story, and it was something that Pixar needed, and while at times I don't think this film captures the same lightning in a bottle effect that the original one had, specifically in more of the emotional department, but I think it is such a great progression and great growth of not just Riley, but also the emotions itself, and one of the biggest factors is something that everyone deals with is anxiety, that little orange fucker that lives inside of all of us. That little fucker in this movie, it is kind of shown that anxiety, it's okay to have. And I love that message. And I also love that some emotions tie into other emotions. And sometimes you do have to mix and match those. And I think that was such a great progression of the entire concept. And I really actually hope that we get at least one more inside out. I think this is actually one of those series that you can keep growing. And now, you know, looking back at the audience that when the first one came out, they were probably just kids. And now you're growing them up. And now they're getting experience something else. And they're having that film where they really needed it the most. And I, I love that whole concept. My number nine is Hit Man. This only premiered on Netflix. It should have been wide release in theaters. It would have been so awesome to get to check out. Going around through the whole film festival circuit and the way that it landed out just in this year. Still such a good movie. It's one of those easy films that I've like been recommending to almost anyone. It's, it has this romantic comedy flair to it, but it kind of has a dark cynical side to it as well. Glenn Powell's writing is superb in here as well as his acting i love the direction in here too not from glenn powell most notably but it's from the same dude who made days and days and confused which is one of my favorite films out there and just everything to this movie is just that quintessential fun summer film that you're gonna want and Again, as I've mentioned, when someone comes to me and asks, what's a good movie that's on streaming, Hitman is the automatic one that I always go to. And I know at the very least that person's going to like it. It's just so damn entertaining. And I love the dynamic and the changes throughout the entire story. It is a lot smaller than you would expect. And it's not an action movie, but it's one that I loved. Number eight is The Bike Riders. Tom Hardy, Jodie Comer, and of course, Austin Butler. And for me, this is the good fellas of motorcyclist and motorcycle clubs and I love the true story that they built into here and specifically even seeing it on a rewatch seeing how they build up the dynamic the characters the family aspect of this and how this motorcycle club really much evolves over time is just so believable I've said it before and I've said it again the only issue I have with this movie is I wish it was longer this movie could have easily been two and a half hours, maybe even three, and it really would have fulfilled those Goodfellow vibes that I was wanting. But the story feels like that. It is told like Goodfellas in a lot of different ways, and 
Again, the performances are so good in here. Jody Comer, Austin Butler. But primarily, I really want to focus in on Tom Hardy, who for me, I think, gives such an excellent performance and one that I just don't think we've gotten from him in a long time. At one point in time, he was one of my favorite actors working in Hollywood, and The Bike Riders reminisces that to me, and I really love this movie. But number seven is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, one of my favorite films of this year so far, and such a great comeback to the Apes franchise, especially that season. Caesar trilogy, which I still go as far to say such an underrated trilogy when it started, and I think it's become one of the most beloved trilogy, but I was always rolling my eyes. You don't bring back Andy Serkis, you don't have Matt Reeves coming back in, who I know only did the last two films in that trilogy, but were so special. And you have Wes Ball coming in to direct this, who did a, a decent job with the Maze Runner movies. I liked them. I thought they were fine. And towards the buildup, I didn't watch the trailers for this. I, I just, you know, I, I wanted to be excited because it's a new Apes film, but I, I just couldn't. And then something particular happened. Wes Ball got picked to be the director of the Legend of Zelda live action movie. And I said, okay, there's studios are talking. There must be something special about Kano, the Planet of the Apes, which for me is the third best Planet of the Apes movie ever created. Um, I think this movie does such a good job and especially needed to do this in establishing 300 years later our new characters that they want us to follow and love. And the fact that I came out of this movie liking Noah as much as I loved Caesar after the second film of his own trilogy, that speaks a lot. And I really hope that we get another Planet of the Apes movie that furthers his progression as well as his group. And even if it's not him directly alone, Maybe it's his entire structure, his group. And I love how it was just an evolution, no pun intended, of this entire franchise to that next level. And also showcasing how sometimes us, even in our own world, will take history from other people and other civilizations and twist those words. See how people have twisted Caesar's words through now 300 years later is a massive thing. Such a great, great movie that only brings back the Apes franchise that I cannot wait to see what we get next. And into my number six, which is a film that I saw at the start of the summer and then finally came out, I think, of around July, and that is Sing Sing. This stars the likes of Coleman Domingo and a wide variety of cast members that I've never seen in anything prior. And I think that's because a majority of them were actually a part of the Sing Sing uh, acting group that's all in prison. It's these the way that these prisoners are able to express their artistic values. It's one of those movies that when I, I had heard so many buzz coming up to it, I didn't know if it was going to be great, good, live up to those expectations. And I remember watching this movie and instantly in the first 20 minutes, it just locked me in, not from just Coleman Domingo's amazing performance, but from the entire concept and that creative aspect that kind of frees our mind to when we're in prison. And that freeing of the creativity could come from, again, being in prison or maybe being in prison to yourself and your own mind. See the progression of this entire movie and in general, how it kind of further these characters where one character you might be like that's such a fucking total asshole i don't like him by the end you like are in love with him and there's so many different aspects in here that i also will go as far as say that sing sing might be the most underrated movie of this year i've seen so many people oscar prospect it i'm still not in the camp that it's going to get nominated i would hope it does but that's a hefty hefty word with a lot of other bigger films but sing sing deserves your attention and it was one of the summer's best let me get into my number five which it seems like a lot of people are mixed on this movie but for me alien romulus just fucking stomped ripped and tore apart everything that i wanted and i say this as someone who prior to this year would not have called him someone who loved the alien franchise there were certain alien films that i loved but after taking Taking a deep dive and diving into the Alien franchise before Romulus, I kind of just came to love it all. And I kind of understood the aspects of it to where I can even say now that I love the original, which if you'd watch previous videos, I'd never said that before. And I think I love the Alien franchise so much because of how different and unique a lot of the films are and how different they are and how every person I feel like has their own favorites. Like, especially after I did my ranking and shared what my favorite Alien film was, I was expecting a lot of backlash and I, I definitely got some, but to see other people's point of views and like, oh, that's totally fine. Like, I love this one. And that's not one that I would have put as my number one. I think that's such a cool thing. And I think Alien Romulus kind of strings together a love story and a love letter to all of the other Alien films, while at the same time, the last 30 minutes crafting its own originality that only excited me more to see what they were going to do. And I really hope Fede Alvarez gets to make a sequel to this movie because I truly think what was set up here 
can only add more into the Alien franchise, and I loved Romulus, especially, like, that last 30 minutes. Like, I went from really liking the movie to going, holy fuck, this is one of my favorites of the year. Speaking of favorites of the year, at my number four, after just rewatching this one as well, The Fall Guy deserved so much more love, so much more praise. I love this movie. It's one of my favorite romantic action comedies of probably the last decade. Ryan Gosling just is awesome in here. In some ways, I want to change my entire personality to reflect his character in here. Emily Blunt is so superb as well. I love their dynamic. Aaron Taylor Johnson's a blast. Winston Duke is great. I really came to love The Fall Guy from when I initially watched it in theaters to even checking it out at home. It's just one of those movies that I love, love, love to go back to. And it's kind of been that one that since it's gone on streaming on Peacock, I've just kind of put it on the background. I can tune in anytime and just enjoy the ever-living shit out of it. It breaks my heart that this movie did not garner a bigger success story because I would have watched thousands, 30 of these different Fall Guy movies because the mystery, the action, all of it was just crafted so well, and this is hands down David Leach's best movie yet. We get in my number three, which again is another controversial one. Sometimes I talk to people and they love this movie. Other people I talk to and they fucking hate this movie. But for me, Long Legs was just that psychological, supernatural detective story that I have been craving to have in a film. And I think what Oz Perkins does here is the unsettling nature of imagery and storytelling that he really crafts. Now, it's not all about the gore, because there's one gory scene, but for the most part, it's not a gory movie. It's not a brutal movie. They're, they do kind of more linger into the thoughts of you thinking what is worse out there, but is the imagery of like the devil hiding in the background. And just the silhouette. And Micah Monroe's phenomenal performance in here. As well as Nicolas Cage who is also great. It's just all these little tidbits that just intrigue me and make me happier and happier with the longer and longer the movie goes on. And I was so impressed with what Long Legs was able to accomplish. I truly can't express enough how much I love this movie. And it's one of those movies that... I took my wife to who's very into like crime documentaries and crime podcasts. And the fact that she was so interested in this film too... I could watch, honestly, I could watch another one of these films with just Micah Monroe's character to just continue this unsettling nature because there's so many aspects to the lore and the story. I just felt satisfied leaving this horror experience and I was so happy to have it. Let me get into my number two. And this is probably my most rewatched movie in theaters for this year and also in the summer. And that is Deadpool and Wolverine, a movie that I was highly, highly anticipating. It was my most anticipated movie for this year but was also the film that I was the most nervous about. So many different factors to this. One, Logan is one of my favorite comic book movies of all time. I didn't want them to disgrace that, to ruin it. And Deadpool is one of my also favorite comic book movies of all time. He's one of my favorite comic book heroes of all time. I love Ryan Reynolds in that role, and I love that first Deadpool movie so much. Now, the second one, eh, while enjoyable, it's a little bit disappointing to me. But I needed this movie to not just be an epic team-up of them, but also have meaningful aspects to it because that's one of the things that is really important to me within the Deadpool characters how meaningful he can actually be in some of the most mundane situations and on the surface of Deadpool and Wolverine it is a celebration and a love letter to the Fox X-Men universe also a coming out party for Deadpool joining the MCU and I think that is an awesome thing to have him bringing in Hugh Jackman to tag along and go on this journey to how they're going to bring him into the MCU overall but as well as tag along into the multiverse of it all, going into the void and adding in all these fun cameos, which everyone knows who they are now. You got Blade, you got X-23, you got Elektra, and of course you got Gambit. Ooh, I'm gonna make a name for myself. He absolutely did make a name for himself. And the fact that those cameos didn't just work in that department, but also works in the department that they are actually meaningful characters and all tie in to the thesis of this film. Which again, surface level, exciting, fun blockbuster. You can pick apart certain things, you can pick apart certain aspects, but the thesis of this film is the meaning of your life. And I found that so fascinating to see how the cameos looked at that in some degree, but particularly our two main characters, Deadpool and Wolverine. And while we've seen Wolverine have this epic ending to his story in Logan, this new variant of him we meet at the lowest point in his life. And he doesn't know what is his, what is the point of living. 
And Deadpool, in some way, in shape and form, is also in that same capacity. And to showcase them discovering that together is the reason that I love this movie. The more and more I think about it, the more and more I love it. And it truly is just one of my favorite things that I've gotten to experience this year. It's also really funny. It's also action-packed. But it has that heart to it. And that heart for me is the reason that this film works. Number one favorite film of the summer is hands down Furiosa. I absolutely loved Furiosa. Top to bottom. It's one of those films that when you jump in and watch, you're just like, holy shit. And as a massive fan of Mad Max Fury Road, I found this to be the quintessential and perfect prequel to any movie. Like genuinely, like when you look at prequel movies, this has to go down as one of the best prequels because of the way that it establishes and makes Fury Road a better film. It makes me want to watch. The second I'm done watching Furiosa, I want to jump right into Fury Road because it ties in so perfectly and gives you this epic nature. Yeah, it's a little bit slower. Yes, there's not as much action. Yes, maybe some of the action isn't as great as Fury Road, but it is a different type of film in the Mad Max world. You know, going in, I wasn't that excited that we were getting a Furiosa film. I would have personally rather just had another Tom Hardy Mad Max movie, but after getting this, it's hard for me to deny how much I loved it. I loved how it didn't just even focus on Anya Taylor-Joy. It showed on the younger version of her, which that actress did a phenomenal job as well. And Chris Hemsworth gives one of his best performances in his, in his entire career. We go down fighting and arguing and defending Furiosa. And I'm so happy that we did get this film from George Miller. And sadly, it looks like this might be the end of the road for the Mad Max franchise, at least for now. But I hope that George Miller at least gets to one day make one more Mad Max film, if possible. But if this is the way that we're ending, I'm happy that we now have this conclusive, full picture story of Fury Road itself and I'm just very grateful for that in the end of the day. That is my top 10 favorite summer movies of 2024. Thank you so much again for watching. Again, next week, look out for my most anticipated films for the fall 2024 season. Leave your thoughts down below. What films are you hoping to see on that list? Which films should I add to that list? I'm not going to film that video until a couple days after this, so maybe I will look at yours and see, oh, I didn't have that on mine. But thank you guys again, and of course, until next time, stay classy. Stay classy.